Yes, welcome to the No State Project live from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Glad to be with everyone today. I appreciate everyone tuning in to a, the uh, second live uh, broadcast. Actually, episode 33, but it's the second one here on YouTube. It's September 6, 2017 already. My gosh, we're already into September. But I'm glad to be with everyone here. I don't know what exactly is going on, but... Uh, I've narrowed it down that I'm not going to have, I, you, I, I can't join the caller line. So I'm not going to give out the, the, the general caller line because I can't connect to it on a windows machine. I tried on the Macintosh and it works. So obviously there's something about the signal coming from a windows machine. I can't connect. So if you want to join me on the big show today, and I hope you do, uh, you're going to have to instant message me first on Skype. Uh, so you can Skype me at Frank Rizzo 3. That's Frank Rizzo with the number 3. Uh, and if we have to, if you don't have Skype, you're not using Skype, you're using your phone, then what we'll do is once I cover a couple of things over here, then I'll give out the phone number because I don't, you know, because then, I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, it just, uh, yeah, it won't look right. It won't sound right to just start getting, you know, a number of phone calls uh, because I, there's no waiting line. There's no queue uh, until I get that fixed. I don't know what the hell's going on, uh, but I figured I'd give it a shot and try on the Mac and see if it would, would go on the Mac and uh, it, it connected right away. But I didn't have the opportunity to connect the Mac to the other computer. So this is what we got to do here today. Uh, but I've got a lot of stuff to get to. I want to thank everyone for their continued support of the big show. Uh, next thing to work on is some lighting because it just seems to be from that side. But I'm glad to be here uh, with you for episode 33. We'll be live this Saturday uh, for the big show for the three hours of Anarchy Radio or Voluntarist Radio. Uh, so definitely, if we don't get to your calls or your comments today, then definitely check us out on Saturday and... Usually not an issue with the call of the line, this particular issue, but I've never been able to do it and since I just started doing the show with this particular computer, and thanks a lot, Matthew and Calvin, for that. I've not been able to connect to the, con the caller line, uh, but now I know it's this machine. It's a Windows, it's the Windows platform, something about the signal, it's just, it's just screwing things up. So I don't know, we'll get that figured out, but... We have had some year here on the No State Project and those who have come to MarkStevens.net for help on how to defend themselves. Because if you want to learn how to effectively defend yourself, and I know someone just corrected me again, um, I guess because we've had success in Israel, then that would actually be four continents, not just the three. So we have four continents going. But if you want to learn how to effectively defend yourself, definitely check out this broadcast and the archives we have at MarkStevens.net and the videos. And of course, you those most people watching now are watching on YouTube so you have my YouTube channel which is no state project and um, what we do is we go through the Socratic method and so this I mentioned on the Skype chat the no state project Skype chat that this dismissal had something that uh, it was an extra bonus to this dismissal because anytime you have an opportunity to show one of these lying uh, critics who have to lie about my work instead of just addressing it head on. Um, one of the lies that got someone banned is, and this will get anybody banned. If anyone turns around and wants to criticize, that's fine. Criticize the material, but get it right. Don't lie and don't straw man the position. Actually address the position head on. And it doesn't mean anything to say, well, the court turned them down. Just because someone gets turned down in court doesn't mean that they're wrong. Uh, you know, uh, Gitlitz versus Commissioner, Gitlitz was 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 defeated every step of the way until he got to the Supreme Court, and then the Supreme Court said that everybody else is wrong. So just because a court disagrees with you doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you've got some people who, for whatever bias, there's. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're not actually addressing your argument. It's just like saying that uh, asking for evidence is a frivolous argument. No, it's not. Uh, it's a tactic. It's a way of defending yourself. It's not an argument. The argument would be after I asked him for evidence and, and you know, he, he, he didn't have any, I concluded that he doesn't have any evidence to support his conclusions and that he's arguing without evidence and that would be a due process violation. That's the argument which is supported by evidence. Uh, and it's not frivolous. I could be wrong. Maybe there is evidence, but that's why we stick so hard to the evidence. 
We want the damn, because if there's, because questions of fact are never frivolous. Never frivolous. And that's because to be frivolous has to be so lacking in merit, it requires no demonstration. So the fact that you have to produce the evidence shows it's not frivolous. You're wrong, but it's not frivolous. Frivolous does not mean, oh, someone who disagrees with me. Uh, you know, it, it, someone has a, if someone has a contrary life or a belief or a contrary argument to yours, that doesn't make it frivolous. But when you have a vested interest in this criminal system called government, then you can't even allow that anyone that has an argument against you, you can't even allow for the possibility that it has merit. Frivolous. So that's what they must do is teach these lawyers, especially district counsel for the IRS, that any time that they uh, are supporting the IRS or defending the IRS, uh, they're probably taught, all you, hey, dude, all you got to do is start screaming frivolous from the rooftop and the judges will bend over backwards to support you. Frivolous, frivolous, frivolous. Uh, questions of fact, not frivolous. Could be wrong, not frivolous. So... Brett, Brett in California, this is traffic, criminal traffic in California, and uh, where did this, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not on the other computer, so I don't remember exactly where in California this was from, but it is in the justice court, and it was a judge, George Hernandez, and, uh, it was police officer Osteen who was present in the court. Now, what happened up to this point was what we typically do when Brett did this. He filed a, the, in California, it's still called a demur. So the motion to dismiss for a lack of evidence proving jurisdiction and a valid cause of action is called a demur. And if you look at, at uh, I have the government code somewhere, I'll get it in the video. Uh, a demur is appropriate when you are attacking the factual sufficiency of the complaint, that the facts as alleged do not constitute an offense. And so basic common sense dictates over here that if there's no factual allegation showing that the rules applied, then it doesn't, then it's factually inaccurate, factually insufficient to just say, well, we have this rule and he violated it. Well, do the facts show that the law that the rule applies in the first place? If it doesn't, factually inaccurate, and that's why you do the motion to dismiss or a demur. We also have with that a request for judicial notice because we're trying to make it more difficult for the judge to just outright deny or overrule the demur. Uh, because one of the things we want to show in there is that yeah, the uh, the California court system, like all the rest of them in Canada and the United States, they're all adversary systems. There has to be an actual adversary. And so we've had them, and I wrote in government indicted, that some judges, to just and just like this judge uh, uh, Hernandez, uh, just deny it. See, because they're not actually reading it. It, it, it. Yes, you don't have to take judicial notice of everything that's in the motion. Of course not. Uh, you can, you know, there's obviously there's a, a number of different sections and the judge can say, well, I'm going to take judicial notice of one, two, and three. I'm not going to take judicial notice of three and four because it's, you know, it's just not true. But to deny that's an adversary proceeding, you got one other thing left over there that I can think of. And that would be inquisitorial where there's no presumption of innocence because that's where all logic is thrown out. And that's where the presumption of innocence comes from. It comes from the fact that the burden of proof is on the accuser and that until they have evidence to support their claim, you're presumed you're innocent because you got to have some damn proof. So there was also the Brady slash discovery quest. And uh, again, I'll review this every show. Uh, Brady material is information that shows that the that you're innocent. Any information, including impeachment uh, uh, evidence, information that would show that the witness against you or witnesses against you lack personal knowledge or are not otherwise qualified, competent, or, or credible witnesses against you. Now, there is no prosecutor in this particular one. It was all done by the police officer. So he wrote the ticket and he's prosecuting this. So the judge at a pre-trial hearing, denies everything. No explanation that I'm given. I just, right, just, just denied. Denied. 
But there was no response. Well, he was denying the demur and the motion for judicial notice. Again, the judge is denying it's an adversary proceeding. So he's also denying that a corpus delecti, according to the uh, California Supreme Court, is, requ is required in every criminal prosecution. I know, I know. They say every criminal prosecution, but then they start calling and add exceptions. But, you know, for taxation, we don't have to. Then stop saying for all criminal. All means, you know, everyone. So, Brett follows up the lack of discovery and Brady material given by the police officer because this is what I require, what I, you know, think we should do. You file with the police officer at the police department because he is the prosecutor he has made the accusations and now he's prosecuting is not the, the, the prosecutor if there's going to be one has to file a notice of appearance at least in arizona uh rule 13 of the civil traffic rules um so um but they still have to put in some they have to notify you that they're on the case so we don't get a response back from the police officer for the Brady and the discovery material. Now, the discovery material includes, of course, evidence that the police officer relies on to support his claim of probable cause and that the laws are applicable to you. Because again, critics, the handful of them that are for this show, and you'll probably get them on, of course, YouTube is full of those cancer-given uh, comments. You have to have evidence. Got to have the damn evidence. If you're going to say the rules were violated, you got to have some proof that they apply in the first place. And making an assumption, that's not evidence. Evidence. You have to prove it. Evidence. You have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt with evidence, not an assumption. And like I've said before, if you start with an assumption, especially an assumption that sets the relevance for everything else, you cannot prove your proposition beyond a reasonable doubt. Not starting from an assumption. Well, they're true because they, they apply because we said so. That's not evidence. So, because no evidence showing that the Constitution laws applied because he was physically in California was given by the police officer, and the police officer did not respond to the Brady request, uh, because if he had evidence showing that he had personal first-hand knowledge of that, Guess what? He's supposed to give it to him, to Brett, in the pursuant to the discovery request. If he had the evidence. So, because he doesn't have the evidence, the Brady request to be responsive to that and not violate due process, he has to lay out that he, as the only witness, doesn't have personal first-hand knowledge of these, uh, of, the, of these claims that he's testifying to. So what Brett did, and this is part of the package you get at markstevens.net, he filed what's called a motion in limine. Now, the motion in limine is a pretrial motion used to limit evidence and argument. So in this particular case, what we argue in the motion in limine is that if the prosecutor is alleging that the laws apply to me, but has no evidence and no qualified witness to support that claim, then they should not be allowed to argue, right? Doesn't that, that right? That, if we were making arguments against the prosecutor and we had no evidence, you could be damn sure that not only would they file a motion in limine, but the judge would uh, probably threaten sanctions and contempt if you dare to argue that, in fact, we've seen that before. We've seen that with Mike in Idaho, where he was threatened by the judge not to raise a certain issue. And that's what a motion in limine does. So what we do is we laid out the evidence. Well, we asked him on such and such a day, the court has a courtesy copy. We asked him for discovery and Brady material. The police officer did not respond. What's his name? Uh, yes, Officer Osteen did not respond to the discovery request. So, pursuant to his refusal to exercise good faith and provide the discovery and the Brady material, which of course is exculpatory evidence or information, goes to the competency and credibility of the witness, which is Osteen the cop who wrote the ticket. Now who, now come on. Now if, if we're asking for evidence that the Constitution and code apply, 
And if there's a witness with personal first-hand knowledge, Osteen is the guy. This isn't a matter of a prosecutor having to get with him and investigate and, and, and interview him and find out. He knows he doesn't have such proof. He knows he's just giving a gun and saying, go out and give tickets, okay? All right, that, that's what he does. He knows better than anybody that he doesn't have any evidence to support his claim. Zero. Absolutely nothing. So it was no surprise. We've got the docket. Okay, I've got the minute entry order, rather. I have the documentary proof from Brett to prove this. So this is the extra bonus. Because not only did the police officer show up and request, and this is, I'll have all this in the video. You'll be able to see this after, after the live stream. It says right here, this is a minute entry order from yesterday, September 5th. Before the judge, George C. Hernandez, and it says, Officer Osteen, present in court. Defendant present, that's Brett. It says, case dismissed pursuant to officer's request. Dismissed in the interest of justice. Defendant released, case closed. Save minute order to case. So, there you go. See, the bone is here. And again, we have the minute entry orders to prove this. So when they say to you, every single time a court has considered my material, it has been, it, it, it's, it's been denied and described as sophistry. Yeah, you see, I have motions that were granted. You can see that at MarkStevens.net. I have the actual documents unredacted that you can look up. Here... Not only, now, yes, it was the officer's motion. He motioned to dismiss, and that, that's what was granted. And okay, and so the ticket was dismissed in the interest of justice. Yeah, because he never liked to stand on. He's a lying predator. But what the minute entry order will show that I'll have up is that the motion in limine was granted. Okay? It wasn't described as sophistry or sophistry. It wasn't described as frivolous. It wasn't described as legalistic gibberish. We showed that the police officer did not give the discovery. We showed he did not give the Brady material. We argue that pursuant to, you know, fairness and due process, that no one should be allowed to argue without evidence. And the judge granted the motion in limine, which limited... The police officer's testimony and evidence, if any. He was the motion limine, which I wrote, specifically states that they should not be able to argue that the laws apply to us. Granted. Again, minute entry order from the judge will prove this. So no wonder. Imagine the police officer has just received an order from the judge. He can't even argue that the laws apply. He can't even argue jurisdiction, which means he can't argue probable cause. Because he has no probable cause that the code was being violated because he doesn't have a shred of evidence to show it applies. It's an assumption. It's a damn assumption. That's all it is. Or what I like to call speculation. But from now on, it's not speculation for this police officer. He's just lying because he knows he doesn't have the proof. And Osteen is going to go back out there on the street and make the same legal determinations against other people. And we already know he doesn't have any evidence. What are they going to do? They're going to pull him off the street? You think he's going to have a crisis of conscience? Oh, this is not so what he did here, he realized, I got an order from the judge. I can't even say that Brett is subject to the laws of the state of California. I can't argue probable cause to pull him over. I got... Motion in limine was granted. So what do you do in a situation like that? When the judge is actually saying, you cannot argue the foundation of your case. Well, you do the only thing you can do and save face. Because obviously if the judge granted the motion in limine, we've got a serious contradiction here. Why is he granting the motion in limine but denying the demur? 
that's but it was pretty clear maybe just figured all right the police officer did not obviously did not respond to the discovery request and because of a lack of discovery i've got no choice i'm gonna have to grant the motion in limine which orders the police officer not to argue that the laws apply not to argue jurisdiction well it's a code violation if you can't argue that the code applies you cannot argue that it was violated sorry but that's the way logic works and if i was to say that my rules were violated by by one of the critics they they, they go go off on goal because your laws don't your rules don't apply to me that's right because i have no evidence as much as these people who call themselves government no evidence if they had the evidence they would provide it and the judge wouldn't go and file a motion uh, grant a motion in limine so the police officer, this uh, Osteen, only thing he could do was file to withdraw. So congratulations to Brett for standing up to these predators and, and getting this thing tossed out, not getting discouraged that the judge just initially denied or overruled the motion, the demur, and the motion for judicial notice because look the granting the, the denial of the motion for judicial notice sets the stage you now know how dishonest this judge is he's not even reading it and why isn't he reading it because he's so biased typically in favor of the cop all they're doing is collecting revenue all they're doing is collecting revenue Uh, see, well, Jameson, yeah, if you want to give a call, give us a call. Um, but I, again, congratulations to Brett for getting this thing tossed down. And that's the thing about police officers. So what I want to discuss here, because um, I, I don't, I'm sure there's other people saying this. I'm not one of these, nobody's talking about, you know, I can't stand that kind of clickbait garbage. Well, no one's talking about it. No, that, that, that's almost never true. Whenever you see a video or someone starts it off, like, no one's talking about it. Shut it off. Just turn off the video. I'm sure there's people have spoken about this, but I want to discuss this because I haven't necessarily seen that. Uh, this whole thing about what happened with, uh, was it Nurse Wubbles, I think her name was, in Salt Lake City? So this, this has exploded. Um, and it, the hospital, not only was this guy finally, uh, put on the criminal investigation, man, we know where that's going to go, but, uh, he's still actually a cop. Now, for those who haven't seen it, uh, basically what happened was a police officer named Payne in Salt Lake City, um, after a, was at the hospital trying to get a blood draw on the victim of a horrific car accident so the salt lake city police i believe i guess it, well police in the salt lake area were violating from what i understand uh policy and going and doing a high speed chase well the individual they were chasing wound up hitting somebody causing a he died on at the scene and the one of the victims suffered severe burns was taken to a burn unit at a nearby hospital in salt lake city well this particular cop pain did not like being told no. And so he wound up arresting uh, a nurse Wubbles, who actually was an Olympic uh, skier, uh, I believe, uh, a number of Olympics ago. And now she's, she's a nurse. And the video came out a month after because the police, it took them four or five, four some odd weeks to release this videotape surveillance so we can see it. The police officer, the police chief, so the, the police chief, when you see them, they already knew about this incident for four weeks before the video was released. I'm surprised they even had the video to release because so many times there's a malfunction and things, you know, footage like that is, is always lost. So I'm surprised that they, they released it in the first place. But I think the reason why they probably released it in the first place and that nothing was done to this police officer is for the, the simple fact that this police officer is not... A bad apple. This officer Payne is a typical cop. He did what most cops would have done in the same situation. What it came down to is he wanted a blood draw and he wasn't going to take no for an answer. It didn't matter 
that the hospital and the police department had already had a, a, some kind of agreement about this. Now, I know there's some gray area potentially for the fact that uh, if he was really a commercial driver, that there's implied consent when you get a driver's license, you get a commercial driver's license. So the issue had to, had to do with the fact that he couldn't give consent. The police may have been looking at it from a standpoint, he gave consent when we allowed him to have the driver's license. Now, I, look, obviously there is no implied consent when you force somebody to do something. You cannot try, make a living doing this if you do not comply with that. So the, the, to say that the, there's implied consent, I mean, no. There's no complied consent when something's done on the threat to arrest and coercion. Uh, sorry. Uh, but bottom line is this police officer went through the force continuum. And there's no doubt that in my mind and from what so many of us have seen in person and on in you know with video evidence that this police officer is not a rogue cop this police officer Payne did not do anything unusual the only what's unusual is that the video got out that's what's unusual it's unusual that not only that but he is on a criminal investigation well nothing's gonna happen because he followed protocol yeah people are outraged and maybe Maybe there'll be a few, you know, a few thousand people woken up to the reality that this is standard police behavior. So the, uh, I, I think uh, one of the uh, chief doctors or administrators at that hospital issued an order telling the police officers to stay away from their nurses and they're not to go into certain parts of the hospital anymore. But I want to make clear is that this is typical police officer behavior. They are not taught to treat us as equals. Anyone who's known a cop, anybody who's a friend of family, they're not trained like in the military. They're not trained like firefighters, they're not trained like EMT, uh, you know, uh, you know, regular first responders. They are trained to take and keep control. And if they start to lose that control, they have to go through the force continuum. And that is to use more and more force until they get compliance. Now, that does not mean for a second that the force continuum is being used because their life is in danger. You don't need a force continuum necessarily when for self-defense. If someone is physically initiating attack against a police officer, even I'll say, uh, it doesn't matter who the victim is. The victim has every moral justification to use the amount of, of, of defensive force to neutralize the attack. But that's not what the force continuum is about. The force continuum is about compliance. So here you see in the video, he says, that's it, we're done. This man, very short fuse, doesn't like being told no, didn't matter what the, what the, what, why she was doing it. She was very nice about it. She said no. And that is contempt of cop. How many times do we have to see things like this before the average person says, you know what? There's a serious problem here. And I know the mainstream media, which is almost worthless, will say, there's got to be better training. No. That's like, you have a criminal organization. Criminal organization. Why do we say that? What is the evidence? What are the facts? Police officers are part of what's called the state government, and they have no voluntary support as far as monetary support. It's all coerced. No one had a choice on whether there was a government or not. Governments have always been by conquest, always have been, always will be. Because if it was voluntary, it wouldn't be a government. Because you wouldn't have taxation. Forcing strangers to give you money is 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 wrong. It's criminal. It is wrong. It is robbery. It is stealing. Just calling yourself a government doesn't change that. If it's wrong for me, it's wrong for you. And if it's wrong for us, it's wrong for Mr. Payne. Payne being the police officer who initiated that attack against the, against the nurse. You know, someone saying the evidence is the fun under all the paperwork is the gun. It is definitely the gun. That's why police officers tend to act the way that they do. 
because they're gone. They, they are given a gun. They are taught that they are in control. They have to maintain control and that people should die to maintain that control. Because one of the police officers, what do they say? They're the ones that are making it home that night. They're the ones who get to go home to their family that night. And if you get in the way of that, you're the one who's going to die, not them. Not the way uh, real first responders, real adults look at it. Firemen don't say, and soldiers, which I was uh, at one point a soldier. Soldiers don't say, hey, I'm going home tonight. I don't give a damn about you. What's important is that I get home. No, that's what the cowards say. That's what the cops say. I get home tonight. You Have you ever heard of firemen talking that way? Firemen are, you're going to get home tonight. My job is to make sure you get home tonight. This idea that cops say, well, we put our lives on the line every... No, you don't. Because you're important. The most important thing to you is that you get home. Not the people that you think that you're out there to protect. Because I got news for any cops watching. There's absolutely no duty for you to protect anybody. There's no duty of protection and there's no duty of allegiance for me or anyone else to comply with your rules. The only rules that we have to comply with are the basic principles of right and wrong we learn by the time we're four or five. We don't need someone in Washington, D.C. to tell us right from wrong. You do. It's these, these police officers. Because their whole concept of right and wrong boils down to legal and illegal. And then whatever they, as part of the, the protection for the oligarchy, the foot soldiers for the oligarchy, whatever the oligarchy allows them to get away with. There's no way in the world you or I could have done that to that nurse and we walk away that day. There's no way we could pull up on a 12-year-old boy and shoot him within two seconds and walk away that day. We can't just unload a firearm into the driver's window of a car because we think somebody's smoking pot and we walk away that day. The cops do it every day. So this police officer Payne, well, he, he rightfully will never have a, a, should never have a job again. He's a scapegoat for the system. They're going to just lie and say he's, he, he, he violated this. He did that. He, should. he did exactly what cops are trained to do. You don't get compliance. You go up, the, chain, you go up the, the force continuum. And you use whatever physical force, including deadly force, to get, to get compliance. Because what have all the talking heads in the media say? Well, you should have just listened. Should have just listened. Hey, hey, give me a break. I'm going to see if we can bring Jameson up. See, um, we'll give him a call here. Hopefully, and, and if you want to join me on the show, I guess after, if we get a, a couple of Skype calls. All right, uh, we got Jameson? <laughs> I've got no audio now. No, you got nothing, nothing coming through. Uh, damn it. We got Jameson now? Shout it out. I guess I've got another tech issue here. I uh, don't know. I guess, uh, I don't know what the problem is. But I've got no audio left from here. Let's see if I can. And I guess for the podcast, we can always. No. We've got nothing. No. All right. Don't know what happened. Uh, let me see if I can just take some, some text, uh, some questions. Uh, has to do with the unlikely event that the prosecutor does their homework and figures out that you are. Uh, let, we'll try it here. We got, we got, we got you now. We got me now. Hey, uh, hey, maybe it was on your end because I had absolutely no audio before. No idea, no idea. 
Um, so, uh, quick question, two quick questions. Um, one, I wanted to kind of get you, get you, uh, your thoughts on, uh, what you, what you think of uh, quasi in rem as far as a jurisdictional claim. I don't think I've ever heard quasi in rem. Yeah. Um, it's out there. Basically what it is, is it's, um, like you don't even have to be in their jurisdiction as long as the, the property, like say I'm, I'm in San Antonio. Right. And uh, they pull my car over in Austin. The car is in Austin. Like, I can claim that I'm not a part of, you know, the, the area. But because the car is there, I own the car. Then, therefore, you know, that, that's, that's generally how they try to, try to construe it. Oh, okay. It. I, I just never heard a phrase as quasi in rem. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, I, I get, yeah I've, heard, I've heard before, obviously, when they're going after someone's property. And they're not right. physically in the area. They could be out, you know, overseas. Okay. Now, what, like, how would you deconstruct that claim? Same, same methodology? Yeah, we've done this before as far as, the, as property tax because their claim is that the property, because it's physically in, let's say, Arizona, because it's physically in Arizona, the rules apply. That's why you know, they claim that the Constitution applies to all persons and property within the so-called state. I would do it the same way. They're saying that the property is – that the Constitution, a written instrument, no one uh, – the Constitution, a written instrument, no one bothered to sign, applies to the property because it's physically in, um, in Arizona. And I just I, – so I go about the same exact way. Oh, all right. Well, that's your claim. You got any proof. Right. Okay. And uh, the second uh, thing I wanted to ask you about was uh... – you know, the, the what if, it's a hypothetical. It's one of those things, you know, it's like you, you know, have have and not need versus need and not have. Um, you know, you and I are both veterans. We both have served in the U.S. military. And uh, what if, uh, and maybe you've run into this, maybe uh, like, you know, a prosecutor. Now, I've never seen it happen. You know, prosecutors typically tend to be, tend to be pretty dumb. But say we get a smart one that actually does their homework and then tries to go for in, in personam jurisdiction via the fact that you are either a veteran or you received, like say you're a disabled veteran like me and you, uh, you receive a, uh, a, a stipend or a benefit from the government. Therefore you are beholden to it, or at least that's what, what their claim is going to be. How would you, how would you de deconstruct that? Well, for myself, I'm not a vet. Okay. I did a, I did three years, but I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't see any combat or anything like that. And I well, didn't, you know, so we're not, we're not making, well, we're not making the claim that we're veterans or that we were in the military. It's just, they are the ones that bring it. They're going to use my military service as a nexus of per, for personal jurisdiction. Or try, or uh, let's just say um, you're uh, claiming unemployment benefits or you get. Uh, That's you know, different. Like, let's, say, let's say if you get food stamps, like what, what then? That's a big one. That's why I've mentioned on the show when I'm doing some when I'm working with somebody with the IRS, I ask them, "Have you have you filed bankruptcy? Do you get unemployment?" So, uh, with when it comes to people in those positions, I there's not I I can't help them as far as a jurisdiction issue. They got them lock, stock, and barrel. There was somebody that right in the middle of an IRS call, we were on hold, and he said to me. I probably should have told you before that, yes, I did have a bankruptcy. I went, <sighs> so, yeah, if there's a bankruptcy, uh, then, the, yeah, there's, there, there's obviously uh, not that, a problem, and it's not somewhere I'm going to be making the same, uh, you know, using the same approach. You can't. Copy. Copy. Um, now, what, what uh, specifically, like, um, with regard to, uh, let's let's say, um, like me, I'm, I'm, like I said, a disabled veteran. I get about, uh, you know, like 20% rating, and I get a, a check every month. So if the feds decided to come for jurisdiction, and that's the angle they used, is that is that going to, basically, they're going to shut me down, right? Well, they could do that, or they could say, well, if that's the way you want to do it, uh, if you're not within our jurisdiction, then obviously we have to cut these benefits and ask you to return them. Oh. Okay. Okay. Copy that. But, you, uh, these, oh, the, you know, they're very, look, this, this is something that goes back well, well beyond even Rome. 
the whole patron system is alive and well, and they're going to give out as many favors as they can to get people emotionally attached to them and so that they won't challenge it. I mean, just look at what you have to do as far as a voluntary society that you want. You know, let's say even if it's just uh, New Hampshire, you know, you can't just go in like it's, you know, like this fantastic wet dream of volunteerism and think that we're going to get rid of the government. You can't just get rid of it in one fell swoop. You, there's so many things you have to take. What about all the people whose lives literally hang in the balance because they need certain payments or they, you know, they don't get the treatment that they need. So there's so many people that are dependent uh, on it that um, on purpose. So you can't just get rid of it in one day. It's just not. What do you do about all the nuclear facilities? You can't just get rid of government tomorrow. You have to have a contingency plan. How do you take care of all the nuclear waste and nuclear containment? Containment. What do you do? So they get that they, they've got their tentacles into every single part of society. So even if you could get over the mental problem that block that people have, the Stockholm syndrome, you've got the practical problems like, okay, how are we going to continue and have not have society completely collapse while we're, you know, socially evolving to get rid of these predators in our midst? They're very, you know, my point being that they're very smart and they've got themselves into every part of society. So it's going to be very difficult for us to get rid of it. Now, would a would a good counter uh, to that kind of argument be uh, the relevance, or even uh, within emotion limiting? Like th this is this is arguing, you know, outside the facts. Like this this isn't even stated in your in your complaint. You know, it's like you're gonna you're gonna claim jurisdiction just because of this. This isn't even on the record yet. Well, they could just easily amend that complaint. Oh, true, true. Well, yeah, they, they'd probably that's that's what you know the guys and I were talking about is like they they probably just uh, you know adjourn for another day and then and then uh, submit an amended you know, complaint. Yeah, they 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 always have the ability to do that. They you know, like they just give me a few minutes, sir. I'll have a paralegal uh, give you a two page amendment. Yeah, and and then they've got it. So uh, when you see it's different than a driver's license. A driver's license, you don't have a choice. And, and, you know, I, I know Republicans would say, yeah, but you, you don't have to drive. Okay, get, 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 please, fungal, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. Uh, but the driver's license is different. You, you, you got, you know, it's, it's the same thing as me paying for federal taxes, you know, to have the Internet. It, it's just a part of the bill. There are certain things you have to do. You don't have a choice. Going in the military, I, had a, I didn't have to do that. Will it be used? You know, it sucks because you're in a much different situation. You're in a, you, so your situation is is more in line with uh, someone like Adam Kokesh. Yeah, you know, it's it's a little more difficult for Adam to be challenging jurisdiction when he's on a, on a federal pension. You know, federal uh, uh, what is it? Um, you used the word before. What the med medical disability? Yeah, medical disability. That's right. So someone like Adam's on a medical disability. So. It's one thing for him to challenge state jurisdiction, but the feds, eh, they could just yank his pension or his disability. Yeah. yeah, It's like people have said to me that I used to work with people that had immigrated from China and they went through the naturalization process and they wanted to fight the IRS. I'm like, well, yeah, you can do that, but you have to know that they could turn around and just send you back. So you always have to disclose that. But when it comes to bankruptcy, yeah, my hands, I, you know, I, I yeah, your hands are tied. You, you're going to have to attack it from a different standpoint. Copy that. Copy that. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, drive on and uh, keep up the good work, sir. Well, there was, uh, as far as, uh, when you raised the uh, in rem, I just, before we, we uh, I let you go uh, with that, did uh, did you have anything going on regarding that? Oh no no, I, I was just um, you know it, it's like I've I've had um, what was it I I don't I don't remember if it was a traffic thing or just it was just um, oh I remember it was it was for when I didn't show up for jury duty in in uh, Virginia a couple years back and I think that was what they what they claimed as far as jurisdiction was quasi in rem because I own property within the within the territory and therefore we own you yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, um, I've mentioned it before, 
but you know, I, I guess we didn't use the actual phrase that that's the, that's how they're going after like with property taxes, it's in rem. Um, and if they were to go to court, it would usually be in rem, I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, we, yeah, just to read. Yeah. Well, it's a form of, rem, yeah, but it's just, it's one of those like weaselly ones where it's like, okay, you know, you're, um, you don't live here, but you have property here. So therefore you, you know, you need to speak, you know, we own you basically. Yes, you have to, you can only use this property the same as somebody who's physically here. You can, the property can, still can only be used in the manner that we say, that we agree right. to. And yeah, it's a, it, 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 it's no different than the vassals and, and the, the fiefs that you had uh, in, in medieval times, you know, it, it, it's not your property. They're allowing it. There's the, I even have in government, no, it was Adventures in Legal Land. The United States Senate was quoting a Supreme Court case. Nobody owns property according to them. We are allowed to use it. So property tax is a use tax if you want to get strict with it because only the government owns property. They own everything. They own the entire continent. So it's it's no surprise. I, I love how they try to, to justify the tax by saying, oh, the property's here and you get benefits. And therefore, we can tax and tell you what to do with it. You know what? What if I don't want the benefit? Try to get well, off you, the you grid. Raise, you raise an interesting point there. You say benefits. Well, you know, okay, so I'm receiving uh, a, pen, a medical pension. So, like, that's a benefit. But then the same argument can be raised, you know, on the federal you know, it's like, well, you live under our, our strategic missile command, so you're receiving a benefit. You get to sleep at night because we have nuclear missiles pointed at whoever. That's a common. That's a common argument. Right. But you can still. You can still. Uh, well, it's not as. It's not as tangible, I guess. That's sort of more of an abstract. Well, they, they claim because there's police. You right. know, there's police, there is a military, and I've had people, you know, very upset with me. You enjoy the protection of that effing military. Dirt, dirt, dirt. I was in the military. I wasn't protecting anybody's freedom. If anything, I was just protecting, you know, Wall Street and, and the Pentagon's bottom line. I mean, come on. Uh, how many times have I, you know, spoken with Vietnam vets who tell you the same thing? No, 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 no. We were not protecting anybody's freedom. No, no. They'll be the first ones to tell you weren't. But uh, it's a common one, and it, 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 you still have to go back to the original. How the hell did you pay? For all that equipment. Did anyone? Did, 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 oh, you stole the money. You stole it. You stole it. It's like, I, I say that I don't get a, me a medical pe pension. I just get my income taxes back. Well, a lot of people look at it that way. Some people said that they're never going to sign up for Social Security. And other people said, you know what? Bleed the system dry. Take any, every dime you can, you know. But you know, some look at it. Look, I, they stole the money from me all those years. And it's not like it's a handout because I pay, you know. Uh, I'm not making a judgment on that today. You know, it, it, some it, it, look. Sometimes you're in a position. Someone is saying here in the chat is uh, is Mark saying that if a person was disabled from birth, there was no way to challenge the system. I, no, we were talking of someone who's currently, you know, who chose to go in the military, and uh, so we were a little more uh, narrow in focus there. What do you say? What do we say if somebody who's disabled from birth can they challenge the system? Uh, I would like to think so. Where are they getting the money? The thing is, if you're challenging the system. You have to do it, and you've been disabled from birth for whatever reason. And if you are going to challenge it, just like – so if you are going to challenge it, uh, just like someone who is naturalized, you have to uh, accept the consequences, right? You could lose your benefit your, – your, you know, you could lose your payments, your benefits. It's just like uh, why – well, people say, why don't people challenge the, the uh, property tax like they do the income tax? Because most people don't want to lose their house. No one so far, although we have someone who's been on the show, Jay, uh, uh, up in uh, Massachusetts, he might actually do it. Uh, maybe we can coordinate and do that. But he is going into it knowing he could lose the house. So, yes, if someone is disabled from birth, that they want to challenge the system, yeah, as long as you know you could be you, – the rug could be pulled out from under you, then go ahead. As long as you, you understand the risk going into it. I mean, that's, that's the thing about being an activist. You have to accept that kind of risk. Yeah, I, I just uh, I screwed up and bought a house here in Texas, so I'm, I'm kind of stuck here for another five years before I can dump it. Ugh, well, you're not in Houston, right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm in San Antonio. 
Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's yeah. Just like yeah, you know, yeah, Houston's Houston's about up to the boobs in water, so uh, they're in a bad way right now. Yeah, uh, you know, I I hope uh, you know, I hope uh, I, it's bad. And I now we've got this uh, this other one that's gonna that's saying 150, 180 to 180 mile an hour winds on uh, Irma, that's gonna be slamming into the Caribbean today. Oh, okay. I'll, uh, that's news to me. I'll uh, go check that out. Uh, you see, you're so wrapped up in your own anarchist point of view, you're not paying attention. <laughs> I don't even I don't even look at the news. I... <laughs> well, I, I can't blame you. I, I know about it because a good friend of mine lives in Key West. Uh, some other, you know, friends that, that are in the area. I know a good friend of mine who lives in, uh, you know, uh, in Florida. So I, I don't blame you for not listening to the news. You're much better off not watching it. Well, they caused a gas shortage. Uh, here, here in San Antonio. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't. I was. I didn't know about a gas shortage. Is that why my? Yeah, they, uh, they shut down um, some of the refineries down in Houston because of the flooding. And immediately, what the media went and did here locally in San Antonio, and as well as you know, as far as I know, uh, other outlets as well, uh, in other localities. Uh, they just, oh, there's, there's a gas crunch. You got to go and get a get, you know, get gas. Well, you can. And then like everybody and their stupid mom went down to the, to every single gas station with a pump and filled up all their cars and all their red little gas cans and then ensured that there wasn't going to be any gas. And you know what? Monday morning, guess what? There was gas because every, you know, uh, uh. Well, you know, that raises a point that I wanted to make, uh, you know, the media has a certain narrative, and what I hate is is because I I think the guy who's pretending to be president right now is just a vile narcissist. I can't stand the. I'm no fan of anybody who's dropping bombs on on brown people, you know, uh, in, in the Middle East. So it doesn't matter who who it is, but the media is just so. Oh, I hate to think that some of the things that the guy says are correct, you know. Uh, it, 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 but you have to, that's the thing. You, you, the narrative spun by the mainstream media is, is no, look, it's as dishonest and disreputable today as it was five years ago, 10 years ago, and 15 years ago. Yep. Uh, it's, so, it's the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, there's, um, they're not going to get on there and say things like, what happened to that nurse is an aberration that, that, whoa, that's just not the way cops behave. No, they, 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 they're not going to get out and say, this is the way cops behave. And this is the evidence showing why they act that way. They, 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 they have no accountability and they're given a gun to go out and abuse and dominate people. I mean, how, what, could you imagine CNN actually reporting? Look, when you give a gun to a man, and strip him of responsibility and accountability, and tell him to go out and dominate other people. You got it. You that's what happened to that nurse is the natural result of the system. It, it can only be that way. They're not going to go out and, and tell most, you that. Yeah, and most people aren't even going to experience it, or, or you know, it, it hasn't happened to them yet. They still think they can hold up the Constitution, and the guy's just going to be like, oh, okay, I, oh. yeah, I'm sorry, the Constitution. The Constitution. I whoa, you got me I, there. I was about to arrest you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was about to beat you down. <laughs> right. We see that's something that's not going to that pocket Constitution it, in your in your hand. Yeah, it's not. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. It, it's not going to. Uh, it's not going to stop the beat down for sure. And and it's it's somehow. Look, I've done my some of the work of showing how dishonest the mainstream media is because I had a sitting councilman say we have jurisdiction because I said so. Nobody would report that. All the guy did was say, and it's all it's on the website for anyone who doubts me. You could just go back a few years and you can see. All the guy did was repeat your argument has no merit. I said, it's on video. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> so that tells you the editorial policy. We also know that I've reported that uh and I had the evidence to prove it right on my website. They went and, and, and reported someone that I've worked with on Fox News. And they reported on the East Coast that he was a tax cheat. I had the evidence on my website because they told me they do not do fact checking when the government calls them for a press conference or to do a story. They just take it and go. 
I said, well, yeah. will you at least run a retraction if there's evidence to show that the comptroller was lying to you? They wouldn't even, they wouldn't even accept the evidence. I couldn't even, I said, can I, I sent them the link. I said, look, just listen to the link. Here's the link. Because I, I, what I'm referencing for uh, is I did a cross-examination. I did a tax hearing. So the very agent that said that he owed taxes that the comptroller then reported on Fox News, the very agent admitted she had no evidence to support that claim. Admitted she wasn't even qualified to say it. Did they run a retraction? Oh, no. no. Well, it, it, no. you know, that, that raises up uh, Bastiat's argument. That uh, okay, people are dishonest and and cruel, and and we need to be ruled. Well, ruled by whom? People <laughs> who are dishonest and cruel, and you know who. <laughs> so it just the 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 ad infinitum, the uh, the the circular argument. Yes, man cannot govern himself; therefore, he should govern others. Right. Yeah. Well, that gets into a whole other thing about white nationalism that I don't want to get into right now. That this whole oh, the whole thing of the inferior that. races and the inferior and the deplorables who have to be controlled for their own good. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I actually just looked at the time. We're uh, wow, you've taken us to the to the top of the hour, my friend. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no that's I I I don't you know my uh, my caller line. I'll get that figured out. But uh, uh, I, nobody else was instant messaging me. So and I didn't want to give out the number yet. So, and we kept, we had a few other things to talk about, but I think a healthy distrust of the, uh, the, the media is a pretty good start. Uh, it's like George Carlin said, I don't believe anything a politician says, and I believe almost nothing about what the, the media says. Yep. You read my mind. I was just about to say that. Oh, I see. Good mind. Great minds think alike there. Well, Colin, uh, yeah, he had it. It's a big club and you oh, ain't. Yeah. It. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, uh, kind of, a an offshoot from H.L. Mencken, if you ever read any of his stuff. Yeah, right. I've read, I've read a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, everything Carlin ever said, uh, Mencken said it about 80 years earlier. Well, Mencken had it right, you know, and uh, so many of the – um, didn't he write – no, that was uh, – well, wait, The Enemy, The State. I can't – oh, I'm really – butchering the book oh, uh, that's uh that's jay knock that's albert uh, jay knock our enemy the state our, okay i screwed that one up. well they were contemporaries so right right like i got the time frame right so yeah, yeah. our enemy the state and uh and it i think it's disgraceful and, and and it makes our job it makes getting to a voluntary society I don't want to put a downer because I, I think we can get to that point, but we have to be realistic about it and realize that if this is not a piper. You know, we can't just, you know, be about smoking pot. You know, you need engineers. You need civil engineers. We need people who understand sanitation. We need people, people who still have to run nuclear, you know, nuclear containment play. You know, John Oliver did a, a thing about it, about how many it, – it's scary stuff. Really scary stuff. It's not a matter of we can just retreat to New, New Hampshire and, and start smoking pot and women can go around topless. There are people whose lives have to still, you know, who can't take care of themselves that are wholly dependent upon things like Medicare and, and uh, Medicaid and, and government assistance. And, and uh, it, it's not an easy transition by a long shot. And um, it, 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 uh, we're out of time, but I'll have to discuss it more on Saturday's show. Good time, good time. I think that it really, if, if we, if we're talking about getting to a volunteer society and we're making reference to things like this, and it's not just a matter of going out and smoking pot, which I don't have anything against anyone doing. It's just, I don't think that that should be a focus of getting to a volunteer society. I think it has to be, and this is just me. One of the main focuses has to be is completely discrediting them as an organization that it's immoral, that there is no government. They're, they're just a private, you know, bunch of private organizations that are controlling us and as long as we got these kids in these indoctrination centers it's not going to change either well because people aren't questioning it people right. uh and even if they're taught critical thought and analysis and and taught basic principles of logic they're not taking that focus and putting it on the concept of government absolutely which is yeah. really really unfortunate and you got them you got them you know captive for 12 years pumping that stuff into their heads you know it, it takes time to, to deprogram 
Yeah, but I think with the internet now, I think there's a lot more questioning going on with the younger, you know, with the millennials coming up, and they 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 can see that uh, you know they they seem to be more skeptical, and, and and I think it's the media trying to portray them as just a bunch of sissy Marys that have to have safe spot safe spots or safe places yeah. or whatnot. I think that that whole gender dissectional. Uh, Marxism. I can't even remember the, the, oh, all the all the social justice. Yeah. All the, that's uh, the uh, modernists and whatnot. Oh my gosh! All that. Yeah. All that uh, social justice crap that they had. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's and, and yeah. I, I don't have the time. I've I've got to run. But hey, I do appreciate you. We'll we'll talk about that. I can talk about that that cross sectional stuff. Maybe we could talk about that on the next show. And we'll have the caller line set up, so it won't be a you know that won't be a problem. But I, hey, I appreciate the call, my friend. Oh, not not a problem. Take care, sir. You have a good one. Uh, all right, my name's Mark Stevens. You've been all right. My name's Mark Stevens. You've been watching the uh, episode thirty-three of the No State Project live from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Here on my No State Project uh, YouTube channel. I appreciate everyone tuning in live. I will get the audio for this up today. And the video will be posted, obviously, at YouTube. But I'm going to have a couple of sections of the video separately that I have on the good camera because I want everyone to be able to see the documentary proof of Brett's uh, dismissal. So that's big. We had the motion in limine that was granted, which limited the cop from even arguing the laws applied. So the cop did the best thing available to him. Just drop it. Just drop it. So big congratulations to Brett for standing up to these uh, to the bullies and uh, getting me the documentary proof. If you got a ticket or you want to learn how to defend against the ticket, you may uh, then contact me at markstevens.net. Keep watching the show with the broadcast. I got a ton of articles and information at markstevens.net. Government Indicted has a full model available to on how to effectively defend yourself. That we now have more evidence practically every week more evidence of people replicating the success that we've had so far on four continents. So that, uh, yes, three continents, including Israel. So thanks to Eyal of uh, No State Project Israel for the support and for uh, going up against the predators over there in Israel and getting us some success stories. Uh, we will be live on Saturday. So uh, till then, salut.